It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Hi everyone, my name is Frank, and welcome to Full Fathom 5, and welcome to the beginning of my booktube channel. So I first discovered booktube this past February, and it was around the same time that I also was part of a Jane Austen book club. And these two both kind of went together for me because for the first time, reading was no longer a solitary activity. I discovered the joy of sharing my love of reading with other people. And I've been contemplating starting my own booktube channel for a while now. I kept going back and forth, weighing the pros and cons, but it finally started to seem right because after the school year ended and my Jane Austen book club disbanded, I, I started another book club this summer at a summer program I was part of. And it just, it was great, but it didn't seem like enough. I kind of still felt the urge to keep an ongoing discussion regarding books going throughout the year. And so that's why I finally ultimately decided to start my own booktube channel, Full Fathom 5. So why Full Fathom 5? That's a good question. I'm still asking myself. One reason is that a few years ago, I started a, a blog about lots of things. It didn't get very far. And I'm still in the process of semi-resurrecting it, maybe to connect it to my booktube channel. But I was kind of at a loss for a name, and so I thought Full Fathom 5 sounded cool. I didn't come up with it myself. It's from Shakespeare's play The Tempest. Full Fathom 5 thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade. But doth suffer a sea change, into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his knell, ding dong, hark now I hear them, ding dong bell. So I don't really have a cool reason why I chose that that poem or that title for my blog or my channel. I just kind of like how it sounded. I, I enjoy The Tempest. I have to admit I haven't finished it. I'm going to finish it this month. I do know what it's about and I think it's a, a cool premise. It was Shakespeare's last play that he wrote individually, not as a collaborator. I like the ocean and the references it has to the sea, but other than that I don't really have any deeper meaning from it other than I think it sounds cool. I like the alliteration. A little about me. I've always loved books. In college I studied English with a concentration in Western and World Literature, um, and I also double majored in Theology. Right now I'm a seminarian, which means I'm studying to become a Catholic priest. I'm entering my third year of ultimately six years of training, so I'm in, I'll be in seminary for a while. I said seminary, not cemetery, though I did work in a cemetery this past summer. It was an experience, to say the least. So in seminary I've been studying mostly philosophy, and this next year I'll be focusing on getting my Masters of Divinity in Theology. But the interesting thing is, is that through a series of circumstances, I was able to have a lot of electives. So of course I chose lots of literature courses, and through those literature courses I became close to one of the English professors there, and that was how we were able to have a little Jane Austen Literary Society at the seminary. interesting thing about my major in English, though, is that it wasn't immediately obvious to me that that's what I wanted to study. I always loved books, but for some reason English as a class just seemed like a chore. It seemed like a school subject. And it wasn't until I was finally going back in my head over a few different majors that I decided that English was what I really wanted to study. And it fit perfectly. And looking back, I realized it should have been obvious for me, but it really wasn't. I kind of felt like Mr. Darcy, who said that he was in the middle before he knew he had started. But looking back on my life, there are so many influences that contributed to my love of books. My mother and father, who both loved to read, I always saw them reading and who would read to me. Different teachers through my years of elementary school, who not only instilled a love of reading in us through their teaching styles, but also went out of their way to offer different reading programs after, after and before school. Also different teachers in middle school and high school who encouraged a love of reading and writing in me. I figure that for the first episode or video of a booktube channel, the best way to introduce myself to you is through a few or a lot of my favorite books. As you can maybe see, the shelves behind me are kind of caving in because I have to rans ransack them in order to select my favorite books to show to you all. This first book isn't necessarily my favorite book, but it has a very special sentimental value to me. It's The Adventures of Robin Hood by Roger Lansland Green. And so I remember I must have been five or six years old 
and I'd always seen my dad around the house with various books he was reading, very fan various fantasy books he was reading for fun. I noticed that none of them had pictures, and that all of my books had pictures in them. So I remember I spent a very long and tedious day copying out um, the contents of my picture books in order to have a book um, with no pictures. And yet I still wasn't satisfied. So later that night, I made my parents take me to Barnes & Noble so I could buy my very own book that didn't have pictures. And so this was a book I chose. And sad to say that when I brought it home, much to my chagrin, I discovered that it did have some very beautiful illustrations to it. Why I chose Robin Hood, I don't really know. It, it never has been one of my favorite stories, but I do remember my dad reading this to me at night. I think I chose it for green, the green cover, because green is my favorite color. And you can see that it has a very well-worn spine here. Another childhood favorite of mine is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. My dad introduced me to this when I was about six years old, and I just remember completely entering into the world of the of the books and also of, of course, the, the famous 1939 movie from MGM. And I love this edition. I bought it later on. It, it's the 100th anniversary edition, but they made it a replica of the first edition of the book published in 1900. And it's just beautiful. It has beautiful, um, colorful illustrations inside. And it's very special to me. Another childhood favorite, which has followed me into my adulthood, is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. And she also, just like the Oz series, which is, has many books, which I haven't read all of them, this is part of a time quartet or quintet, depending on which books you count. I'm a fan of pretty much all the books in that series, but of course, Wrinkle in Time will always have a special place in my heart. Though my dad did first read it to me when I was still a kid, it followed me into my adolescence and teenage years because the main character, Meg, is going through the that time in her life and and she's a very easy character to identify with for many of us bookish people. But the themes of cosmic struggle and um, Christianity and science fiction and growing up all kind of blended together. I'm really not a big science fiction fan, but the way this book was written really drew me in. So I have to say I'm still a big fan of A Wrinkle in Time. And of course, another favorite book for me that has followed me from childhood to adulthood is the Harry Potter series. Um, I'm starting this booktube channel on July 31st and hopefully posting this video then, um, which is of course Harry's 39th birthday, um, the character, not the book series. And I'm holding up the Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third book of the series, cause, because this has always been my favorite. Um, for me, it's really the climax and the resolution of, the, of this book, particularly, which made it my favorite. Um, this is closely followed by the sixth and seventh books. I'm not really sure. Um, the third was always my childhood favorite. I'm not sure if I would change the rankings now, but I'm also wearing my Harry Potter shirt. I think I'm a Ravenclaw. Um, hi to all you Ravenclaws watching this. Another fun fact about me is that growing up I won not one but two Harry Potter lookalike contests. Um, the second one actually got me a free copy of the seventh Harry Potter book when it first came out. I don't have the glasses anymore though, so that's sad. As you have probably already guessed from what I said about being part of a Jane Austen Literary Society, um, Jane Austen is also one of my favorite authors. Not just me though, she's also one of my mom's favorite authors. Our, my sister Elizabeth is named after the heroine of Pride and Prejudice, Elizabeth Bennet. And I think like most Jane Austen fans, my favorite Jane Austen book is Pride and Prejudice. And for that reason, I think it's more interesting to ask Jane Austen fans what their second favorite Jane Austen book is, because that's where there might be more variants. And for me, my second favorite Jane Austen book is Emma. And part of the reason is the tone is very similar to Pride and Prejudice, at least in my opinion. The brightness, the joy, the wittiness of Pride and Prejudice all show up in Emma. And maybe in some ways, um, as a novel, this is the better crafted novel. But I enjoy Pride and Prejudice better because I think that it's a more entertaining novel. Pride and Prejudice was also the first classic I read for fun. I used a heavily annotated copy called the Annotated Pride and Prejudice, which I don't have here because I lent it out to somebody else. I'm also a big fan of Russian literature. This is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, which is the first um, book of Russian literature I ever read. We read it in high school, and I just remember reading it and being blown away um, by the themes, by the scenes with Sonia, the prostitute, and Raskolnikov. Um, and I read this a long time ago, but I think I really um, vividly remember a scene where they're talking about um, talking about the gospel. I think talking about Mary Magdalene. And I was like, when was this book written? What is this book where they talk? Where they're literally just quoting the gospel. What kind of what kind of crazy wonderful book is this? And so that really um, enkindled my love for Russian literature. And so Dostoevsky, of course, is one of my favorite Russian authors. But um, but I think ultimately, at least right now, my favorite Russian author is Tolstoy, and that's because solely because of his book Anna Karenina. And as you can see, this edition has lots and lots of post-its in it because I wrote 
um, my senior thesis in college about Anna Karenina. It was a double thesis, since I was also a theology major, um, focusing on um, St. John Paul II's theology of the body as a lens in order to read the themes of family and marriage in Anna Karenina. So this is, this is my favorite um, book of Russian literature, but I'm kind of going through a crisis right now because I think that another book has muscled it out for my favorite favorite novel, at least. And that book is Kristen Lobrin's Daughter by Sigrid Unset, which I just finished reading um, just about a month ago. And I made, I made a whole video about how, why it's my new favorite novel, which I will post later on. And um, I basically say, most of what I have to say in the video, but basically it's just so very similar to Anna Karenina. But I think it does what Anna Karenina maybe sets out to do better. I don't know, this book, as I was reading it, it broke my heart so many times, but it just gripped me. And I just felt like, because this book follows the entire life of Kristen Lavin's daughter, a woman living in um, 14th century Norway, I just felt like I was I was living um, her entire life and sharing in all her joys and tribulations. And um, honestly, that was wonderful and awful at the same time. But um, this is a book I definitely will be going back to, even though it's 1,000 plus pages. It didn't feel like that. It's a wonderful book. I'm looking forward to reading many more books by Sigrid Unset. Another favorite of mine is Dante's Divine Comedy. Again, again to my shame, like as with The Tempest, I haven't finished it. I've read um, The Inferno and The Purgatorio twice each, but I still have not finished The Paradiso. So I think that's one that I might be trying to finish this month just to <laughs> just to complete my set. It's interesting though. Um, like I said, that Kristen Lavin started my favorite novel. Um, and Pride and Prejudice is one of my favorite novels too. This is one of my favorite books in another way, and it's really difficult to say which, to say which one is my favorite. Um, I pick one just for the sake of saying I have one, but they're just so different from each other. And this is a very beautiful book. I'm sad to say I was introduced to this in college by a mediocre professor, who um, somehow, in spite of his um, appalling teaching style, I accepted the fact that this was a classic and um, figured that it just wasn't for me, even though I, I liked it. It wasn't until I was studying it again in seminary that I really appreciated um, the genius that Dante is, not only in his use of allegory, but also in his work as a poet. And just um, and just moving from the Inferno, which most people who read this are most familiar with, to the Purgatorio, the two poems, even though they're part of a, obviously a, a larger epic, a three-part cycle, they feel so different. Inferno, throughout the entire poem, you just feel so heavy. You feel the pain of the souls. Um, who are damned. And then moving to Purgatorio, within the first line you feel a weight lift. And it, you, maybe you don't realize that you feel this weight on you in the Inferno until you start the Purgatorio. But I think it takes a, a real genius author to be able to do that. And so I guess I agree with T.S. Eliot. I guess I agree with T.S. Eliot. It says something along the lines of Western literature is divided between Shakespeare and Dante. There is no third. I probably botched that. Secondly, during my board interview for seminary, um, my fascination with Dante was brought up as an interview question. I hope I did okay. I must have because I was accepted to the seminary. Of course, Shakespeare is one of my favorites, as you can tell by the channel title. This is my trusty Norton Shakespeare. And when I was undecided for my, as my major in college, I took a class on Shakespeare's tragedies and tragic comedies, and that probably was instrumental in swaying me to become an English literature major, or Western world literature major. As for a favorite play, I don't know yet. Maybe once I finish The Tempest, I can say for sure. But the idea of his tragic comedies, which The Tempest is one of them, fascinates me. Well, I forgot to say at the beginning, um, this book is, this is an awesome mug. It has all famous first lines of literature, which kind of gave me my idea for my intro. And all the, I haven't read all these books, and all the books that these lines are from are on the bottom. And it also says, funnily, for best results, use other side. It's made by the Unemployed Philosophers Guild, and they're a little sassy. One book I keep going back to, and actually, which I don't have the copy with me, but I have three other books by the same author, um, Evil and Wah, is Bride's Head Revisited. Yes, haha, I keep going back to it, Bride's Head Revisited, keep revisiting it. Okay, maybe it's just me who thinks that's funny. But um, that was a book that we read in my book club that I was part of during my the summer, the kind of summer school program I was part of this summer. Um, and so now I've read it three times, and each time I get something more out of it. The first time I really didn't get it, I think I kind of kind of like the Divine Comedy where I had faith that um, there's something good going on there and I just didn't really understand it. Um, the second time I appreciated it more, I watched the BBC mini miniseries with Jeremy Irons and I really enjoyed that. And this third time I feel like I really got a lot out of it. I think I'm going to make a movie about um, my, my reading experience, rereading this book for a third time. I love the um, lavish, extravagant language that 
um, Wa uses. He said he wrote it during World War II, and in some ways, looking back on it um, later on in life, he said he was appalled by its extravagance. But I think he was just kind of being grumpy and appreciated that he was doing something great in this book, because I think his other books, I've only read two other of his books, are very different in tone from his son in Brides Are Visited. I think he's more bitingly satirical, and in Brides Are Visited, he's much more nostalgic. Um, looking back on life. And of course I love the Catholic themes in it. I kind of think of it as a Catholic version of Downton Abbey, but better in a lot of ways. It's interesting how many people love that book. These books are also special to me. They're the Lord of the Rings series. Um, these copies right here I actually bought before I was born. I assume he's married to my mom at this point, but anyway there's some sort of discussion between them and they they bought these books um, and he said that when he has the son um, he, he would give them to him as so I'm the son so I have these these copies. Um, he read them to me growing up, and so I finally read them on my own. Um, now about, I think I finally finished the series two years ago. And so I did enjoy it. Um, I appreciate the world building and the storytelling in this. I have to show this, especially because I guess maybe you could say this these are the first books I ever owned since they belonged to me before I was even conceived. So I'm not too upset if I forgot any of my favorite books because that's the whole point of having a booktube channel is that I can share my favorite, favorite books with you and hear about your favorite books. I hope you subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a chance to take a break from YouTube and read a book today. Bye!